Nothing compares to ginataang manok with freshly squeezed coconut milk and all the ingredients from the very backyard. Let's join Romila at his shabby provincial kitchen. Good morning. It's Tuesday and I'm at my hometown in Anda. And you see the uh, fish pond at the back. And we're cooking today. You might be wondering, no, it's not fish, but it is ginataang manok chicken in coconut milk we'll be using coconut milk from scratch so we'll be opening this coconut grating it and pressing fresh coconut milk and the other ingredients would be besides the chicken of course and the basic sofrito i'll be adding moringa leaves if you're in ilocano this is marongai mm. I don't know, for the Cebuanos, what do you call this? I think it is... Uh, I don't know, please help me if you're from Cebu, what do you call this? It's Moringa. <coughs> Scientific name is Moringa. And of course, we'll be seasoning it with chili or chili labuyo right from our backyard. And it grows next to the very malungai that we'll be using. The coconut itself fell from the coconut tree on our backyard. So everything from own terrain, from own ground. So, to the uh, posh diners out there. So our food today, our menu has its own distinct terroir. Terroir. Its flavor reflects the very soil where the ingredients came from. What an experience. Let's find out if this is successful. I'm excited. Let's start. I hope you too are excited. Let's start uh, removing the husk of this coconut. If this was shown, we would be removing this for ease. But let's do it a difficult way. First is to make the starting line or the starting cut. Oh, careful Romulo. Honestly, I'm scared. <laughs> Don't distract me, cameraman. This is dangerous. Inches from the first cut, make the first slice of the husk. Yeah. Next. Let's clean it a bit. You know what? This coconut husk is perfect as a growing material if you're a gardener. You can grow anything here. In fact, those coconut husks that we buy from the garden center are made from uh, ground coconut husks. If you're familiar with what I'm referring to, those tablets that you just add water to and then they expand. This is the raw material. Now, let's uh, grate this. This is how to grate it. You've seen my man and Grace did it already. Yeah. At first, I thought when I was a kid, I'll be using the sharp edge of the uh, machete or the bolo. By the way, this is called bolo in the Philippines. It's in the Webster dictionary. The correct edge is the back, the dull one. And just hit the, there are three lines. There, first, second, and third. Just hit the coconut on one of those lines. Let's see if you can make a good cut. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't do this always. I think this is my second time doing this. It was my mother who always did this. Ah, yeah, perfect. Now, look. Yeah. So, if you can do it the first time, do it again. If it doesn't work, do it again. And it worked on the third time. Whew. We don't usually drink the coconut water from 
mature coconut, but let's try this. The kitchen turned bar. I'll get a glass. Mmm, not bad. You know what? This is already marketed or sold in Tetra Pak in the cities. I don't know if it's from the young coconut or the mature coconut, but this is still good. Yeah. And this is how to do it. Great. How's my hair by the way? This is the first time I shoot without wearing gel. <laughs> I just woke up. <laughs> this is my morning hair. Good. This would be enough. Look at the amount of coconut that we've grated from one mature coconut. The more mature the coconut is, the better because it's creamy. Now, let's put this away for now. Another information for how useful the coconut is. The husk, I'm gonna break it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, and I'm gonna use it as fuel to the other dish I'm cooking. At the same time, here at the dirty kitchen, I'm cooking pinapaitan. Yeah. Authentic pinapaitan. So I'm using this coconut. Uh, what's this? Coconut shell. I'm using the coconut shell as fuel. Uh, we'll squeeze the cream now. This is how we do it. We usually do the squeezing twice. We add warm water. This is what I've learned. And squeeze and squeeze. By the way, while cooking this, uh, television is on. There's the Ta'al volcano is erupting. And I'm a bit concerned because we'll be going to Kalibo and or departing for Europe. Flights are canceled today. <laughs> Let's enjoy the flavors. If we get stranded, thank you, because we'll have a chance to enjoy the flavors to the max. <laughs> Let's leave it to the hands of the Lord, but let's uh, stay safe. Let's continue. Uh, Let's do the second uh, pressing. The Tagalogs and Bicos have a word for this. In, the, in our region, we don't have. We just say, do it twice. <laughs> they have a word for the first press, and they have another word for the second press. We don't have that in the north. Or, we may have it, but I don't know it. Do we have it? Mga Kailyan ng Ilocano, adapisa utayo for referring to the second press. <laughs> Coconut is not in our uh, culinary tradition, that's why. I want to do gito yan tayo. So we don't have a word for that, while the Bikulanos they have. I'll be introducing you the ingredients, but I'll, we might as well heat the oil now for stir frying. We have our classic stir fry here. I will, the uh, garlic, the the garlic, the onion, and it's chicken, so we'll be using garlic. I did not peel the garlic. I don't have time. 
it will not it will not affect the chains anyway so why bother it's just for presentation like that you need to remove it and maybe hygiene by washing let's start with the ginger and the garlic so cold I'm afraid and the onions now Let me explain this uh, so here. Traditionally, here in our barrio, we would be having here a uh, wood stove. And there's a chimney. We don't want the soot to be uh, filling the hole of the house. We don't want the soot to be filling the kitchen. It's not usually done at home, here in our home, but it's a fact that adding patis to any dish improves the taste. I'll be adding but this to this chicken dish. I pick up the wrong bottle that was <laughs> anchovy sauce. <laughs> that was almost an accident. So this is the patisse now. Yeah. Yeah it is. That's not our salt uh, flavoring. We have to add salt. That's just to enhance the flavor. And add half of the coconut milk now, or not half, but more than three fourths. I'll save the rest for the uh, for creaming later. Alatai style. And since this is Ginataan, I'll be adding chili or long green pepper, all these words, to make a perfect combination. And pepper. From the Sari Sari store. <laughs> Ginataan Manok with Malungai has been uh, boarding here for, I think, 30 minutes. It, it, it's very well done. We're cooking chicken, ginataang manok with malungai, and we'll be adding the next ingredient now, which is the malungai out there. We'll go and gather some marungai leaves. I said marungai because that's how we call it here, not malungai, marungai, moringa, uh, scientifically. And let's add the uh, malungai leaves. Yeah, malungai leaves, which my auntie prepared. And she's complaining, is it this too much for your dish? I told her, it's, it's possible to be generous with malungai because there are even cuisines or uh, recipes that include only malungai. How about aginata uh, malungai? That's good. Now we have malungai and chicken. Even better. Just boil this. I have here the remaining uh, coconut milk. I'll use this to whiten the uh, sauce. It's better to have a whiter sauce than a brown one. Especially when it's ginataan. This is our ginataan malungai. Ginata no, this is our ginataan uh, chicken with malungai. All the all the ingredients: the cream, the malung malungai. From our own pocket. Thank you for joining me, and if you enjoyed watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, and visit share. If you did not and for kind Greetings from our island town, from and hope to see you again next time, either here or at our little kitchen in Holland.
or at the garden. You're cool, Yelenko. Bye-bye. Dios te